the milkmaid and her pail. A farmer's daughter had been out to milk the cows and was turning to the dairy carrying her pail of milk upon her head. And as she walked along, she fell amusing after this fashion. The milk in this pail will provide me with cream, which I will make into butter and take to the market to sell. With the money I will buy a number of eggs, and these, when hatched, will produce chickens, and by and by I shall have quite a large poultry yard. Then I shall sell some of my fowls, and with the money which they will bring in, I will buy myself a new gown, which I shall wear when I go to the fair. And all the young fellows will admire it, and come and make love to me, but I shall toss my head and have nothing to say to them. Forgetting all about the pail, and suiting the action to the word, she tossed her head. Down went the pail, all the milk was spilled, and all our fine castles in the air vanished in a moment. The Ass and the Lapdog There was once a man who had an ass and a lapdog. The ass was housed in the stable with plenty of oats and hay to eat, and was as well off as an ass could be. The little dog was made a great pet of by his master, who fondled him and often let him to lie in his lap. And if he went out to dinner, he would bring back a tidbit or two to give him when he ran to meet him on his return. The ass had, it is true, a good deal of work to do, carting or grinding corn or carrying the burdens of the farm, and near long he became very jealous, contrasting his own life of labor with the ease and idleness of the lapdog. At last one day he broke his halter, and frisking into the house just as his master sat down to dinner, he pranced and capered about, mimicking the frolics of the little favorite upsetting the table and smashing the crockery with his clumsy efforts. Not content with that, he even tried to jump on his master's lap, as he had so often seen the dog allowed to do. At that the servant, seeing the danger their master was in, belabored the silly ass with sticks and cudgels, and drove him back to his stable half-dead with his beating. Alas, he cried, all this I have brought on myself. Why can I not be satisfied with my natural and honorable position? without wishing to imitate the ridiculous antics of that useless little lapdog. A dog and a cock became great friends, and agreed to travel together. At nightfall, the cock flew up into the branches of a tree to roost, while the dog curled himself up inside the trunk, which was hollow. At the break of day, the cock woke up and crew, as usual. A fox heard, and wishing to make a breakfast of him, came and stood under the tree, and begged him to come down. "'Oh, I should so like,' said he, "'to make the acquaintance of one who has such a beautiful voice.' The cock replied, "'Would you just wake my porter who sleeps at the foot of the tree? "'He'll open the door and let you in.' The fox accordingly rapped on the trunk, when out rushed the dog, and tore him in pieces. The Gnat and the Bull a gnat alighted on one of the horns of a bull, and remained sitting there for a considerable time. When it had rested sufficiently and was about to fly away, it said to the bull, Do you mind if I go now? The bull merely raised his eyes and remarked without interest, It's all one to me. I didn't notice when you came, and I shan't know when you go away. <laughs>